And I want you to go with me to the third chapter of the book of Habakkuk. In my ministry now, and my preaching, as God has been working with me all these years, sometimes he's shown me some little things that come, become real large in me. And there's a little phrase I'll show you in Habakkuk chapter 3, that, and I'll challenge you to study this phrase through the Bible and see how many you can find with this phrase has become large in me in this, this hour. I'm still preaching on great questions from the Bible. You know why I'm still preaching? Y'all been feeding them to me. I thought I was done until y'all keep writing them up and said, will you preach on that one? So I, for, for the last eight or nine weeks, I've been preaching on what you told me to preach. Amen. Aren't you glad? But turn to Habakkuk chapter number three. I, I will say tonight, I will have something for you if you are hungry tonight. And if you are in need tonight spiritually, I really believe God has something for you tonight. But look at Habakkuk chapter 3, and we'll use this, this book and show you about three things tonight. And I'll, I'll let you note something here and there and maybe be a big help to you. Look at verse number 17 as he ends the chapter and ends the book. The, the phrase will come to you in a moment. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, that's not a good thing, neither shall fruit be in the vines, that's not a good thing, and the labor of the olive shall fail, that's not a good thing, and the field shall yield no meat, that's not a good thing. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. That is not a good thing. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. That's not a good thing. But look, look at the connection. That verse starts with though or although. But look at verse number 18. I want you to notice this word that changes everything. When there's some all those in your life, I am glad for verse 18 where it says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord, can you say it with me, church? Can you say it with me, believer? The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my string instruments. I'm going to, in the next three or four weeks, start another series. on these all those that are connected with a yet. And I'll challenge y'all to get in your Bible see if you can find some of these for me. But tonight, here's what I want to preach on. I want to preach on trading your doubts for a shout. Now, have you ever, let me ask you this question. It's a big, broad question. Been worried about anything? And for you people that say no, you're lying through your teeth. Because we all worry, amen? amen? We don't know if we go to the doctor this week if we're going to get good news or not. I took a test yesterday. My doc come to me and said, well, you've got a little issue. Now, I could do one of two things. I could worry about it, or I just could trust God. Amen. Am I preaching? You may be here with trouble with your child 
or bills that are mounting up and that's out of control. Or you're here with a family problem or, or maybe somebody just messing with you. You know, a lot of people like to mess with you. And in Habakkuk, his name, I, I, I'm interested, I want you to write this down. His name means to wrestle. Because literally, here's what was going on with him. Have you ever experienced this in your Christian life? A wrestling match between your faith and unbelief. Oh, can I help you again? Have you ever had a wrestling match between your faith? You want to believe? You want to trust? You want God to move on the scene? But unbelief moves in and you start wrestling. Am I preaching? In this chapter, as we get into this book, here's the setting. And I want you not to miss it. First of all, the people of God had turned their back on God, and it seemed like that God wasn't doing anything about it. Hello? And most of the time, these prophets did this. They represented God to the people. But Habakkuk wasn't representing God to the people. He was representing the people to God. Are you all with me? And that's why verse number one of chapter one, if you'll turn over there, said the bird which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. When I look at this dark hour, and how many of y'all agree with him? We in dark hours tonight. Socially, we're in dark hours. Spiritually, we're in dark hours. I see the churches today at an all-time low spiritually because of the wrestling with their faith. Churches that used to have large faith, that had great youth ministries, that had great works, have now dwindled and faltered and failed. And they're a former, they're just a shell of what they used to be. I'll tell you why. Somebody got in a struggle. By the way, y'all don't think churches go through struggles and preachers go through struggles? By the way, this one thing your preacher has had, I, no matter my circumstance, Miss Brenda and I have something in common. We both have our heart out of rhythm. She told me this morning, you encouraged me. She said, I did not know your heart was out of rhythm all the time, 24-7. But I want you to know something. I made up my mind. It's not going to stop my vision. Amen. It's not going to stop my passion. Because right. I'm going to serve God, Brother Rich, until they plant me on the earth. Amen. And by the way, then I'm going to be a whole lot better off anyhow. Amen. It was distressful times. I'm going so I'll tell you what happened. And when God decided to do something, he used the Chaldeans to judge Israel. And they were more wicked than Israel was. And I'll tell you what. Here's what happened. Oh, Habakkuk started wrestling. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to give you three things. I'll be done quickly. I like to say that so I can encourage your faith. <laughs> but I want you to note in your, in your, on, your, on your Bible, make a little note. Chapter 1, I'd like for you to write down turmoil. Because here's what Habakkuk was facing. Turmoil. God's people were wicked, but God was using the people more wicked than they were to judge his own people. Here's what I'll preach on, on point number one. The challenge to a life of faith. I want all y'all to know something. You think you're going to get through this world without your faith being challenged. You don't know what you're talking about. 
Hey, by the way, and because your faith's being challenged, that don't mean you're a bad person. That, hey, somebody else may think you're bad, but that don't mean you're a bad person. That just means you're going through a challenge. And Habakkuk was going through a challenge. Amen. See, what happened is the circumstances and situation had changed for the bad or for the worse. How many's been in that? That you've seen your life go from kind of good to bad. In a moment, you went from on the mountaintop down into the valley. I've been there. Let me give you. By the way, I, I, I wrote this in my notes, and I put by it good. And I want you to hear it. This journey, this Christian life we're living are y'all listening? It's not always having the wind at your back. Hey, by the way, being a Baptist and a fundamental Baptist, the wind is not always at my back. Sometimes we're going into some headwinds. Because this world still don't, hey, there, there's a lot of this world turned their back on our Bible. They turned their back on the blood. They turned their back on the blessed hope of Christ. Amen. Hey, we don't have the wind in our back. We're running right into the wind. But I want you to know, faith will take you through the wind. Thank you, brother. Look at the, let me Let me give you these challenges to your faith, what you're going to find out sometimes. First of all, have you ever felt this? He felt that God was indifferent to him. You ever felt like that? Look at verse number two. In verse, chapter one. I'm just going to give you two or three things. We'll get be done. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou wilt not hear. Even cry out unto thee of violence. And thou wilt not save. That word cry is a cry for help. The second word cry there is a shirking or screaming. He was literally screaming and get God, aren't you listening? Let me ask you, how many of you have ever been through something and you prayed your head off and you thought God was a thousand miles away? Somebody raise your hand. <laughs> you thought he was indifferent to you. You thought he even didn't care about you. Say, by the way, the disciples, when they out on the sea, said, Master, care us not if thou, if we perish. By the way, there's sometimes we get in this feeling when we're challenged that God doesn't even hear us. Then secondly, look at verse 3 and 4. Just follow the Bible. I'm just preaching the Bible. Why dost thou show me iniquity? And cause me to behold grievance for spoiling and balance are before me. And there, there are that raise up strife and condemn. They some people cause me issues. Therefore the law is slack and judgment doth not never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Secondly, look at this. This, this helps me. He felt that God not only was indifferent to him, but what a challenge. He felt that God was inactive. See, I've had a Christian life. I want to tell all y'all this so you can know this. I've had a Christian life that God's been active with me. Man, I tell you, I don't know why he's used me, but he has, and I'm thankful for it, and he's been active. But I won't lie to you. They've been a time or two. How about you? When I needed something, and it seemed like he wasn't too active. You know what that does to us when he's not active? Because we're like a bunch of little spoiled brats. We want everything now. See, that makes us wait on him, and that challenges our faith, and that puts us into turmoil. 
I'm going somewhere. Y'all stay with me. I guarantee when I get to the end, you'll like it. Look at verse 12 and 13. Then I want you to notice second thing, or third thing. Look at the verse. Are you there? It's chapter 1. I'm going to take you all the way through chapter chapter 3. Art thou not from everlasting? He asked God a question. Oh, Lord, my God, my Holy One, we shall not die. Oh, Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment. And, oh, mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Listen to this. Look what he said to God. Thou art of pure eyes that did behold evil and cannot look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously and holdeth thy tongue? Listen, listen to this. You better hear this. You know what he thought God was? He thought what God was kind of cons- inconsistent. How many believe he was in a valley? Here's what he was saying, Brother Randy. Here's what he's saying. God, you're holy and pure. Why are you using that out, that ungodly outfit to judge my people? How many of y'all, can I say this to you? Can I help you? How many's ever been in church and you've been in a valley in church? Anybody been there? And you hear somebody get up, mean it. God's been good. Just healed my infirmity. I just heard from the doctor. I got another one. Huh? And then I think, you ever think this? Well, why is he answering their prayer and not mine? It seems like he's inconsistent. But I want you to know something. He's always on time, all the time. In Lazarus' case, they thought he was four days late, but actually he was right on time. Can I raise my hand? Even though your faith is being challenged tonight, God is on time. Number two, you with me? Am I doing all right? I promise I'm, I'm moving. Look at chapter two. Now, in chapter 1, I told you to write down the word turmoil. But in chapter 2, look at verse 1. I want you to write down the word tower. So what God done, he took Habakkuk from his turmoil, and he said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch the sea what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry. Wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Then look at verse 4. How many loves verse 4? Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But, somebody help me, the just shall live by Here's what he done. This is awesome. He took him from the turmoil and got him up above it and put him into a tower and said, now I want you to look at what faith can do. You know what some of us in this room room needs to remember? That faith can still move mountains. That faith can still part the river. That faith can come into your Red Sea, your trouble, and divide it and take you across to dry land. Thank God for the call of faith. By the way, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Hey, Brother Rich, you know what our problem is? We want to see everything. 
We want, hey, Brother Dustin, we want to see how it's going to work out. Ain't none of your business how it's going to work out. You just trust God, and I guarantee you it'll work out. Because number one, faith enables us to do or to be what we should be. The just shall live by faith. Or may I rephrase it, the man who lives by faith is just. Here's what faith is. Faith is taking God at his word. How many believe we need to take God at his word? It's acting upon the promises of God. It's applying the principles of God. Amen. D.L. Moody said, sin will keep you from this book or this book will keep you from sin. But also faith energizes us to do what we should do. The just, say it with me church, shall live, say it, That word, live, means to revive or make alive. Hey, by the way, God can make alive your old dead unbelief and bring it to faith if you'll let him. Amen. I love this. I'm almost done. But I got to give you this last little truth or two. Abraham, the Bible said, staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Strong means empowered, enabled. I'll tell you a little funny story about your pastor. I don't like to tell funny stories about others, but I'll tell them about myself. How many's ever been to Hazard, Kentucky? Good place to be from. I preached a revival over there. And, uh, the preacher fed me some places, and I got deadly sick. You ever been that way? Got my stomach all upset. And on Friday night, I was driving back from Hazard, got off Brother Mike over here at Hurricane. And uh, here's where I was. I ain't lying to you. My right arm was on, my right hand was on the wheel, and I was about like this, holding my belly because I was getting ready to throw up. And I guess my car was staggering around. It was, y'all want to know what happened? Here come the blue light. Guy stopped me. He knew me, but he didn't see who I was. And first thing he said, he said this. Sir, are you drinking? And he ain't never had no big over 300 pounder do him like I did. I jerked that door out, Lois, about like Abraham. And I said, show me a white line, buddy. <laughs> and I walked down the white line. I said, now, does that look like a drunk? Well, he said, no, he said, you're looking like you're walking kind of straight. He said, what's wrong with you? I said, I'm sick at my stomach, and I'm trying to make it home. But I want you to know, I didn't stagger when I walked that, that line. I tell you what's wrong with some of you. You staggered back and forth between your faith and unbelief. I tell you what we got to do. We got to see the target. We got to see the end. We got to see God and just keep walking to him. He promised, he said it, I believe he's going to take care of me. All right, I'm trying to close. Third point, and actually the text I finally got to. Amen, Zach. You ever got bogged down, Zach, like I am tonight? I am bogged down. Then lastly, third, will you do me a favor? Will you write something on your margin for chapter three? Chapter one, he was in turmoil and his faith was challenged. Chapter two, he was taken up on the tower and he had a call to faith. 
chapter 3, put down there, triumph. Glory to God. The confidence in the life of faith. Or trading your doubt for a shout. When we don't understand, we've got to trust God anyhow. Amen. He traded his worry for shouting. Look at verse 17. Had a lot to worry about. Fig shoot. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, that's worry. Neither shall fruit be in the vine, that's worry. The labor of the olive tree shall fail, that's worry. And the field shall not bear meat, that's worry. All kind of worry. Now, Denny, you're a construction man. And I'll probably mess this illustration up. If I do too bad, you fix me. But I want to give you an illustration that kind of explains this although and yet. Let me say it like this. When you build a construction, then you've done this. And you get a load-bearing beam, and you put that up perpendicularly, I believe, Denny, to those ceiling joists. So here's why you do that. If that beam holds, if the beam holds, the joists will hold. But if the beam fails, the joists is coming down and your house is falling down. Now, let me give this to you. This, this right here makes me want to shout. Mm -mm -mm. The although is the joists. But the yet is the low-bearing beam. Although the fig tree shall not bloom, yet I will rejoice in God. Although I and you may have haters, yet. Although we may be sick in the body, but yet. Although our children may be going crazy, but yet. Although the funds may be low, but yet. Although evildoers are attacking you, but yet I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Amen. Closing here in a moment. Three things there I see. First of all, in verse 17, his sovereignty never changes. By the way, I, I want all y'all to know something. God's not allowing trials in your life to hurt you. God's allowing trials, trials in your life to help you. Amen. My wife and I, we've got a good relationship. She was right this morning. Lord, she kicks me and get. She has a kick. I'm going to tell you about like a mule. When she says something, you say, what do you do? I say, yes, dear. But I'm going to tell you what. We were talking this past week by the, all those in our life. We've had some. Oh, we've had our battles. We've had our haters. We've had our obstacles. But yet, my heart is fixed. I believe the God that has delivered me in the past is the God that can deliver me in the present. Are y'all with me? Woo. I'll tell you a second thing, and I'm closing, I told you. Verse 18, his salvation never ceases. Y'all see that? He said, yet I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I'm going to say something to you. This might be a little heavy for you. 
Hey, Andrew, this may be a little heavy, and if it is, it's okay. God knew I was going to be saved before I ever knew it. You said, what is that? That's foreknowledge and election. You know what God done for John Smith? Hey, listen to me. I don't understand what I could have happened to me. And I don't know why God's blessed me so much, but he has. He's used me, and I thank him for it. But I want to tell you something. You know what he done? He delivered me from an old garbage pit. From old pal garbage. Wasn't useful for nothing. But God, with his salvation, reached Lord I was and brought me up out of the pit and put my feet on solid ground. And my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. I am kept by the power of God. I don't know how much, what kind of salvation you have, but I got one that ain't going to cease. He delivered me from my past sins, my present sins, and my future sins. I'm justified. I'm being sanctified. Somebody help me, and one day I'll be glorified. Then lastly, Lois, you can go. For me, please. I'm closing. Verse 19. I like this, brother. Zach, I like this. The Lord is, the Lord God is my strength. Look at me. How many of y'all have failed God? Raise your hand if you ever failed him. I got my raised. Why did you fail him? Was it that he wasn't strong enough to help you? Or was it that you didn't trust him? These people are all in this room. You got issues tonight. Now you got a job to do tonight. You got to decide, okay, Lord, I'm going to let you be my strength because your strength never collapses. How many of y'all believe I can do, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you? Amen. You say, I got some challenge at work this week. I, bet, I tell you this, if you let God, I think God could go ahead before you. Preacher, I got a doctor's appointment this week. I'm a little nervous about it. I got one of them too. Yeah, I do. Don't know what he's going to say. I don't either. But I do know this. He got strength to help me. There's some of you right now, you at the bottom of your strength. Some of you are fretting because of evildoers. People doing you evil. By the way, you ain't going to stop somebody being evil. You ain't going to stop somebody gossiping about you, lying about you, telling the truth about you. You ain't going to stop that. And by the way, you don't have to stop it. God got it. And he'll give you strength to bear it. You say, that's something at work that drives me nuts. I'd say that, but there's too many church members in here. Listen to me. Have you ever got? Hold it a minute. I've been there, so I'm able to talk about this. Where you want to say I'm done I ain't got no strength to deal with this anymore these people aggravate me to death and I'm done you been there I remember several years ago I'm finished with this story we have a good bus ministry here we've always had and I don't know what happened Rich but I was aggravated frustrated and I tell you how far I went, how, how weak I was. I even wrote out my resignation and handed it. I made a mistake. I handed my wife to proofread it. 
And she read it, and then she folded it up and tore it up. And here's what she said. Because see, the Sunday before, there's a little bus kid that got saved. He's 11 years old. Came up here and wrapped his arms around my leg and said, thank you for driving buses to my house. Amen. And then my wife reminded me of one of the men we had in church who's now in heaven who was a drunk that got saved under my preaching. She said, why don't you go tell that drunk it ain't real? I said, I don't think I'm going to do that. She said, I want you to know something. It is real. And I'm going to tell you what happened. There's some strength. Because I was almost asking you all to sing under my, his wings tonight. Because under his wings, Sister Christian, he got up under me and lifted me through it. Yep. You got a burden tonight? Maybe a health problem? Maybe an issue in your home? He's got strength to lift you out. Woo! Your preacher's getting happy. I want to ask you with your heads bowed. I want to ask how many in this room you got some burdens in your life tonight. You feel a little weak in your faith. And you say, preacher, I'd like for you to pray for me. I feel a little weak in my faith. Would you raise your hand? Slip them up all the house. Slip them up. Slip them up. That's right. Slip them up. Stand with me, every one of you. That's battling something. You're battling an all though. But I say yet. I will rejoice in God. Won't you come up around here at this altar and pray? I'm going to go up to my chair and pray.